Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Salar Khan YouTube channel where we continue the discussion from the previous video. Now, uh, let me tell you one thing when I, when I start a video over here, so I assume that you've already watched the previous video and you're coming in a proper playlist, fine? Right? So the basic concept then the idea remains clear. So a question arises in the previous video, how do the elect how do the holes flow? What is the flow of holes? What is the, the current direction in the flow of holes? So let's say we, we see it a little, a very easy concept, but let's say we give a we give the heading electron versus hole flow. So for that, what do we do? Let's say we consider a p-type material. Consider a p-type material that is uh, a silicon base is uh, is doped with what? Consider a p-type material where what happens? A silicon base is doped with is doped with what? With a group 3 element yes is doped with boron so let's say we we do it so what do we have let's say we have a boron atom a boron atom is like this fine so it has one electron the other electron three electrons so these three are bonded actually the hole is lying over here the hole is lying over here so what do we have? We have a silicon from this side which has an electron similarly on all the sides. And similarly we have another silicon bonded in this because this is a lattice structure. So over here you have a silicon. Similarly to each and every side but this one side is enough for our understanding. What happens? What happens is if what happens that if a valence electron acquires sufficient energy to break the covalent bond and fill the void created, if you have an electron let's say this electron this bonded electron this gains sufficient amount of energy from the surrounding in the terms of heat in terms of light whatever and it breaks this bond so now it can move into what into this vacancy of hole this is a vacancy of electron right not a hole the not a vacancy of a hole this is a hole there is a vacancy of electron so let's say this electron has gained some energy and it has come to where to over here so which means that the electron has moved in this direction from left to right and the now now what would happen in place of this in place of this electron now we have a hole why because now we have a vacancy over here so the hole has moved in the opposite direction which means from right to left similarly it could repeat again it could repeat again in terms of what that this electron gains energy and it fills the, this, this gap and this becomes a hole so again left to right up, right to left the basic thing to understand what I'm trying to show you over here is that the direction of flow of electron is opposite to the direction of flow of hole yes yes direction of current the direction of flow of electron is opposite if I if I write it over here if I write it over here so what do I say the direction of flow of electron is opposite to that of a hole as we saw over here if the electron is moving from left to right the hole is moving from right to left if the electron is moving from right to left the hole is moving from left to right generally basically basically the conduction basically the current is the is the flow of electrons 
which is called electronic current this is called electronic current the flow of electron is called electronic current and the actual current in the circuit is this electronic current whereas the direction if we consider is opposite to the electronic current which is not physically present the physically the movement of hole the, the current is not due to the movement of hole we call it the conventional current and we suppose this to be the direction of current in our textbook we suppose the direction of current to be opposite to the direction of electrons and opposite to the direction of electron in the direction of flow of holes is that fine it is let me read out something from the book let's say if we have so the electron versus hole flow if a valence electron acquires sufficient kinetic energy break is covalent bond and fills the white carrier by a hole then the vacancy or hole will be created by the release electron right therefore there is a transfer of holes from one point to another and electrons from the opposite so direction of holes is the conventional flow that is it majority and minority charge carriers we have already discussed it but let's say we we, we, we just give it a read again so majority and minority charge carriers and let's say I give a heading what where we we combine the two we combine the two let's say so let's say we have an n type material we have a pre type material let's say this on this side you have your n type on this side you have your p type so if we just try to compile the things up that we have previously seen so what do we have in the end type we have what we have a pentavalent impurity number one is pentavalent impurity over here you have a trivalent impurity second point extra electron introduced right you have an extra electron which was of course a relatively free electron over here you have a vacancy of electron created this we have seen but we are just wanting to revise it the third point is you have impurity atoms are electron donors impurity is acting as what as an electron donor over here impurity is acting as what as electron acceptor over here you have the electrons and majority carriers electron is majority carrier over here you have the hole is majority carrier so over here you have the holes as minority over here you have electrons as minority if I draw the block that I drew in the previous video so what do we have over here you have a relatively electron donors right electron donor ions over here you have electron acceptor ions so with this you have an extra electron so with this you have an extra hole right and similarly the minority charge carriers so the minorities would be holes in this case and in this case it would be electrons let's say we read it out from the book what do we have in the intrinsic state the number of free electrons in germanium or silicon is due to the few electrons in the valence band that have acquired sufficient kinetic energy or thermal energy to break the covalent bond or due to the free impurities that cannot be removed 
in the intrinsic state which means what that in the pure state in the intrinsic state which means in the pure state without any impurity added if you talk about in germanium or silicon so do we have any free electrons so we may have some and those free electrons would be due to what due to heat or due to light energy or due to some non-removable impurity right and those free electrons will do what those free electrons would conduct but those are only very few in number right what happens next the vacancy is left behind and they conduct why because they are given energy so they are given energy and they, they, they go from the uh, valence band to the conduction band so they do what they do conduction so when they go from the valence band to the conduction band so only a few holes are left behind why because those few those electrons are very few in number so you have a very few holes left behind so that is the reason that you have holes as the minority charge carriers in the n type material right the vacancy is left behind in the covalent bonding structure represent a very limited supply of holes. In n-type material, the number of holes has not changed significantly from this intrinsic level. The number of electrons far outweighs the number of holes. For this reason, in n-type material, the electron is called the majority carrier and the hole is called the minority carrier. And the spelling for majority is MA. By the way, by the way, this is not an English class, but I saw it over here. For a p-type material, the, the hole is the majority carrier, electron is the minority carrier. While the fifth electron is and this and that. So anyways, for that is it. I believe that is it for here. That is it till here. The basic understanding of the semiconductor physics, semiconductor devices is done. The differences between the three elect, uh, conductors, insulators, semiconductors is done. Intrinsic is done, extrinsic is done, n type is done, p type is done, electron hole is done. What do we do in the next video? And one thing, one thing I missed over here uh, is, is, is about the diffusion current and the drift current. So uh, let's say first is the diffusion current. You would, you would uh, come across this word over here in the books. So the diffusion current is that current when it is caused when the, when the charge carriers move from a higher concentration to lower concentration. Charges move from higher to lower concentration as in this case this we saw uh, that the yes you know what is a higher concentration you know what is a lower concentration so when the charge carrier moves due to this phenomena this is called a diffusion current the other is the drift current and the drift current is what the drift current is when an external electric field is applied external electric field is applied so the current due to that would be the drift current and one thing else when you have uh, the the semiconductor material so i told you that when you apply heat so the number of free electrons would increase yes those are called the intrinsic carriers the intrinsic without any impurity added so the intrinsic carriers would uh, increase right so what do we have oh, the, the the they would move from the valence band to the conduction band so what would happen an electron hole pair would be generated let's say i give over here a temperature effect heading let's say i give over here a temperature effect heading what do you have you have an intrinsic semiconductor material right you have an intrinsic semiconductor material what do you get where well, you give it a heat so when the temperature is increased this would imply that the electrons will move from the valence band to the conduction bank and would be available for con conduction which means what that an electron hole pair is generated fine 
So what do we do that the number the concentration and how is it related? So we have a formula the intrinsic concentration the number of electrons in the intrinsic material is directly proportional to temperature power 3 by 2 The temperature power 3 by 2. This is what I wanted to tell you That is it. I finished this video over here. See you in the next video very soon inshallah where we do what uh, we start the main, mo most important topic of the course the p injection diode by combining a p type material and n type material together that is it till the next video take care of yourselves everyone around you do subscribe to the channel do remember me in your prayers goodbye